Happy Father's Day. A couple of announcements to go through this morning. A reminder, Wednesday night will be the first concert in the park of the season. Who's playing this week? I've, I've got it listed. I was just seeing whether any of you knew. Oscar and the Majestics are playing this week. So come out and enjoy that. We will have popcorn and water. Uh, we could use a couple of helpers to have, hand things out as well. So if you're available for that, I'd say uh, to show up a little bit earlier. But regardless, bring out your golf carts, your lawn chairs, whatever makes you feel comfortable, and come out and enjoy a wonderful concert. Uh, movie night is this coming Saturday. Uh, as of right now, we got it for 7.30. I just need to make sure I figure out the brightness on the projector, or else we may need to move it back a little bit so it gets a little bit darker. But uh, we didn't quite have enough time to mess with all that last night before the storm moved in, So, but we were, we were getting close. We got the screen figured out, how to get it blown up and aired up and set up, but boy, that was a challenge on its own. We figured out how to get the projector, and it was running. Um, but yep, a few more challenges we still got to get through, so that'll be a couple nights this week. Plus, I found some trim, uh, some limbs that I need to trim, so <laughs> so we got room for the big screen to set up there. So uh, you don't know that until you try to set it up, right? It's like, uh, but maybe, just maybe, I'm getting a certain Father's Day gift that'll help me do that. So <laughs> I did. Uh, what else we got going on? A uh, reminder that this Friday will be, I think, the last one for a while for the bookmobile. Is that correct? That, yeah. Uh, we'll be here from 10 to 12. So um, you can bring or take books. You can get a library card if you need to. So what a neat little feature uh, to help out uh, during some times of need that they're able to be here as well. Um, there, are, there are a few uh, cookies and muffins left. Well, they were pretty good this morning, too. I hope I got all the crumbs off. Um, no. We got some goodies from the Fellowship Hall. So feel free to stick around afterwards, or you can even grab and go. It's set up that way as well, but enjoy some. If you would like to sign up for a Sunday, uh, just let the church office know. We'd appreciate that. We're not even let you choose what it is that you want to bring. And if you have no idea, just ask Pastor Cal. He can assign something for you. Not a problem. <laughs> but we enjoy a chance to be able to get back and do some fellowship time again. Again, want you to be comfortable. If you're comfortable, we've got you know, some tables and chairs in there. If you want to just you know, dash in, if you're on your way, that's fine too. Uh, we'll have some uh, uh, lemonade and water and uh, some coffee ready to go there as we need it as well. Those are the big announcements. Um, Hamilton Grove is starting to step up their sweet shop a little bit. Uh, they're going to have some, some new menu offerings, including some different things for breakfast, lunch, and some evening snacks. They need some volunteers to help with that. They're hoping to have it open so uh, a few more hours during the day so when family members come over to do visits and such, they have some opportunities there. If you're interested in, in helping with that, uh, just give them a call and, and say, hey, I want to sign up to help with the sweet shop, and they can let you know some of the hours of that. Or if you need some more information, let me know, and I'll get you some more information on that as well. But what a really neat opportunity that they have for that. So. Come out, you know, sign up, maybe maybe do a once a month thing or, or maybe a once a week thing or whatever you feel like you can help with. I'm sure they would appreciate the help. There are other volunteer opportunities. I just need to get through that list and get that posted, but I do finally have that. Uh, they do have an activities coordinator as well to help with things. So we're looking forward to, to coordinating with them and getting some more things happening out there. Uh, big thanks to our, our, our food pantry coordinators and directors. So. The farm to families packages are starting to arrive and it is fresh produce that was brought in and pretty good sized box. I will be getting a, a picture of that up on our Facebook page later and I'm pretty sure it's already on their Facebook page but to kind of show you the, the transformation that's going on uh, through funds that are available and, and other things going on that uh, the food pantry uh, is able to do things. They had some meals ready to, to, to eat, eat and eat. Uh, this past week, which was pretty neat to see uh, through one of the partners that they're working with. So just some really great transformations. Uh, the garden is blooming like crazy. So in a matter of weeks, we'll be having some produce out there. Again, volunteers uh, throughout the week to help uh, weed things. And uh, when produce starts to arrive, to be able to help uh, harvest things will be fantastic. And your gardens at home. Uh, we've had some rain now the last few days. So I'm sure that pretty soon your gardens are going to start to overproduce as well. Uh, obviously give them to, to friends and family and neighbors and if you have anything left over if you would like to donate to the food pantry uh, let Steve or Pat know uh, I'm sure they will take those and uh, they'll have those available uh, there's just you know nothing beats fresh 
you know that as well as I do, so it's wonderful when we are able to, to uh, share that along the way. <clears throat> Other uh, announcements that you have this morning. Somehow I lost my page up here. Y'all going to be quiet on me this morning? Okay. Looking forward to just some uh, wonderful activities here as we get into summer because we're finally able to be out and about and do some things, so that's a wonderful thing. We are a congregation. Do you have an announcement? July 4th? Oh, July 4th is on a Sunday this year. So we're going to do a combined service between us and Maple Grove. We will host that here. What that means for you is I'm going to let you sleep in half an hour. We will have a 1030 service instead of a 10 o'clock service on July 4th. So mark your calendars. If you're here early, we're going to try and do this outside anyway, so it doesn't matter. But bring your lawn chairs that day. Uh, we'll figure out our setup, but uh, we'll have some coffee and stuff ready to go regardless. So uh, we figure out, well, let's just celebrate together on July 4th. So let your friends and family know too, come out and, uh, and they can sleep in a half an hour too. Okay, and then she'll be there to pick them up. And what time are you going to pick them up and, uh, and bring them in? And so a wonderful time. So yes, so thank you, Ann, for reminding me. So July 4th, 1030 service here. We are a congregation in the United Methodist Church. <clears throat> Our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ through the transformation of the world. Our vision as a local congregation for doing that is... I love seeing that sign. I love seeing us able to share that. I love seeing that be put to work. It's wonderful to be a part of a church that is active in the community, showing the love of Christ wherever we go, showing compassion when it is needed, encouraging and loving others as we go. We're going to talk just a little bit. This is uh, annual conference Sunday. I just want to share about blessed be the peacemakers. Uh, we'll touch on that uh, today. So I think we're in for a wonderful service. I expect to feel the power of the Holy Spirit working in and through the service. I hope that you came with the same expectation that you would meet God throughout our service this morning. I encourage you to stand as you're able for our call to worship, Psalm 9, verses 9 through 20, 744 in your hymnal, and on the screen in front of you as well. <clears throat> the Lord is a safe place for the oppressed, a safe place in difficult times. Those who know your name trust you because you have not Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Occasionally we have them both on the same screen. <laughs> the Lord who avenges blood is mindful of them. And does not forget the cry of the Be gracious to me, O Lord. See what I suffer from, from those who hate me. You are the one who lifts me up from the gates of death, that I may recount all your praises. And in the days of the daughter of Zion, rejoice in your deliverance. The nations have sunk in the pits which they made. Their own foot has been caught up in the net which they have. The Lord has made known. The Lord has executed judgments. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. The wicked shall depart to Sheol, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let the mortals prevail. Let Axel come forward. Let the naked be judged before you. Put them in the fear, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are mortal. We stand and join in singing hymn numbers 577, God of Grace and God of Glory. Hi, Axel. <laughs>
Please be seated. A New Testament reading for the morning is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, the first 13 verses. Paul's letter to the second letter to the church at Corinth. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on the day of salvation, I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians, our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our, in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. That sends our first reading for the morning. Somebody is right up this morning. He's fine, Kenny. You can leave him in here. He's not hurting a thing. He's just keeping everybody awake, and then I don't have to, so that's all right. <laughs> Yeah, I, hear, I was waiting for an amen on that one, so. Amen. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Normally we have a slide. There it is. So I, I skipped ahead to our time of, of worship and our time of prayers and joy and our time of sharing our pains. Uh, it's great to see Tiffany back with us. Tiffany, you feeling okay? Yeah. All right. You got through your appendicitis. Good. That's good. We're glad to have you up and about and moving along. Hi, Annie. Good to see Eddie this morning. Axel's waiting to see if I'm going to say hi to him again. Now he's on the move. What's on your heart this morning? Some prayers, some joys, some concerns. Mert. So that will be on Tuesday this week. So I'll lift her in your prayers on Tuesday that the doctors uh, will be able to diagnose what's going on and be able to uh, set a course of an action for that. So thank you for lifting that this morning. Uh, two of them. About a month ago, the little baby Avery that had heart surgery, he had to go home two days ago. And then our friend Bob Henry, who had a stroke, got to talk to his wife this morning and it's a very long recovery and it's not easy. And it's been this way back, so um, she only told them three has come back from the Philippines. And so she's making it weak and amazingly he's a little stronger. <laughs> so, and I guess yesterday the uh, dietitian or whoever they called her was waiting for her. She came up and she said, Lane is coming back full and something is gone. Who's the <laughs> she found out who it was. 
behind every successful man is an even more successful woman. <laughs> Good to hear. Other joys are considered supporting Peg. Fantastic. Fantastic. Boy, can you just imagine the cakes that are going to be on the table for that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can understand that. Sam! Yes, 29 years ago, I ran for Bruce. 29 years. <laughs> Congratulations to you both. Yes, Toby. Two minutes Not to be outdone. Six and three. <laughs> Congratulations, even I to say yay up here. So congratulations, fantastic. Well, in July, so congratulations to them. And yeah, lots going on. Uh, message uh, from Doug. Uh, he was still in Louisiana for another couple weeks, and they'll be heading down for Texas. But I got to see. Uh, uh, he he sent me a picture of his daughter Erica, who is, is the nurse uh, in all of her gown and stuff. And so it was uh, nice to be able to share. Uh, but uh, but uh, Doug and Twyla are doing well, so I just wanted to send some greetings along there. So greetings, Doug. You know you'll be watching us later on. So good to hear from you. Other joyous concerns this week. Sue. Uh, Almost two years in, so working on the prosthetic. So we uh, pray that things will go well and progress as they need to there as well. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, one of my uh, co-workers had a, a, a tragedy this uh, past week. Uh, I think many of you probably uh, heard about the uh, drowning at Washington Park at Michigan City last Sunday afternoon. Uh, his daughter is the one who was saved, and it was her boyfriend that was lost uh, in that event. So just uh, want to just lift those families in prayers and uh, and lift his daughter in prayer. A very difficult situation uh, to work through, and so just uh, prayers for those. And I know there've been some other tragedies around as well. We heard that Amber, you're saying somebody from the court was in Tennessee and yeah, involved in some kind of an incident. Like sounds like. Lift uh, families. Um, it, it, if, it, there's never a good time for a tragedy, but we can lift them in prayers and we can pray for God's comfort around them. Other joys or concerns this morning. Holy God, we are glad and grateful to be in your presence this day. We have gathered here to worship you in spirit and in truth, to lift your name on high. We are mindful of the world around us and the needs that are around us ever present. We are mindful that we can make a difference in our world. We as individuals and when we gather together collectively as community, we can make a difference in the world around us. Where there is hurt, we can be there to offer healing. Where there is hatred, we can counter with love. Lord, we just pray that you will guide our hearts Open our eyes to see the needs around us and help us to understand how we can best approach those needs and how we can do something to help those around us. Lord, we celebrate Father's Day this day. <clears throat> We're glad and grateful for those who have passed before us, for those who are among us and those who are able to celebrate this day. We give you the glory for, for Christian men who have been leaders and for the Christian women who stood with them and helped them to be strong leaders in our churches, in our homes, in our communities. And Lord, we give you the glory for being our God, for being mindful of us, for blessing us, for showing and showering us with your love. Lord, our, our hearts are torn for those who mourn this week. 
Our hearts are heavy for burdens for those who will be facing more tests. We'll be facing fittings this week for prosthetics. Lord, for those who need your touch. So we pray that you as a great physician will be in each and every situation, that you will make your presence known. Bless those who need your blessing. Guide those who need your guidance. Love those who need your love. And forgive all of us that need your forgiveness. Lord, I'm thankful for this congregation, the work that these, your people, are doing in your name, making that daily difference in the lives of others, positively affecting them in the name of Jesus Christ, building relationships with others that they too will know what it means to have Jesus in their lives. I give you glory for each and every person that's a part of this church, those gathered with us, those who are a part of us from afar, those who will be watching us later via social media. Continue to bless and keep these your people, Lord. Use them as vessels of your love, tools for building your kingdom in this place. Lord, for the heroes of our time, we continue to give you thanks. Nurses and doctors and caregivers and aides and staff and administrators, our long-term care facilities, retirement facilities, our hospitals, our rehab facilities, we're still in the midst of a pandemic. We want so much for it to be behind us, and every time we think we're moving forward, we see new cases, new variants, new cause for concern. But these, our heroes, have been there all along, and they continue to work through it. They continue to struggle with the stresses daily that they have. Lord, we just pray that you will continue to bless them and show us how we can bless them as well. We're thankful for the servants of our community, our firefighters, our police department, our EMT teams. We pray, Lord, you will continue to bless them and keep them, abide with them, provide for them. Lord, for the leaders of our community, our state, our nation, and our world, we pray that you will continue to speak to their hearts, whisper in their ears, call forward leaders of truth, those who are willing to stand up and stand out, for those who need to truly be led, provide unity for our nation where we only see division. Let the word of peace be heard throughout the hallways, the churches, the places of gathering. Lord, we pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who taught us all to pray in this manner. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We continue in our attitude of prayer as we thankfully give our tithes and offerings and gifts back to God. A reminder that our offertory plates are in the back of the sanctuary for a safe way for us to be able to give. Will you join me in the offertory prayer? God of the heavens, the land, and the water that covers it, we know what it is like to be tossed about in a storm. We know that the faith we profess when days are calm and sunny is challenged and shaky when the storm is furious and the water is swamping our boat. As we offer our gifts to you this day, they are given with the hope that we will be better able to let go of what the world tells us. We'll guarantee our security and find our hope and assurance in your redeeming love. Dedicate these gifts in the knowledge that there are other boats besides ours in the same storm. We pray this in the, in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. We'll stand and join in singing hymn number 377, It Is Well With My Soul.
remain standing for the reading of the gospel. This morning's gospel found in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving a crowd behind, they took with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. They woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. It was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Please be seated. A lot of different ways that I could be taking the message this morning, but I want to touch on the theme for annual conference this year. Blessed be the peacemakers. I love how the speakers that conference had each had a way of making sure that they focused on that theme and the words that they brought and they did a really wonderful job of keeping that theme at the forefront of what was going on. I applaud them and did that well. One of the big takeaways for me is the word peacemakers. It doesn't say blessed are the peacekeepers. It said blessed are the peacemakers. There's a big difference there. I work in the world of manufacturing. I know what it is to make things. I also know personally what it is to make things wrong, but we won't go there this morning. I know what it means to make things. Make things take resources. To make things takes someone focused upon the task. To make things doesn't happen by chance. It takes an intentional act. Blessed are the peacemakers. The challenge that we heard and the challenge that I want to give is that we need to be peacemakers. The time has passed for us to be peacekeepers. For we live in a world that does not understand peace, is not happy with peace, doesn't want to see peace. So we need to make peace. Peace. We need to have that intentional act. We need to have that focus. We need to be ones to rise up and be the peacemakers. What does that mean? It means that we have to have a focus on it. We need to understand the task that is ahead of us. And we need to be committed to the task. By committing to the task, it means that we will not be easily swayed to the path that is before us. For the path before us is not a straight and smooth and level road. It's probably not even a road at all. We probably need to blaze a, tra uh, a, a path through it. We need to cut down the thicket that is in front of us. Take out the weed hook or the, the hedge slash pole trimmer that I'm getting for Father's Day. He's already at the table this morning, so I know I'm going to have Plus, I'm the one who bought it, so I kind of you know, I kind of had a hint there. They figured Dad would probably forget. Dad didn't forget, because Dad can see all the projects he has to use it on. So we'll get that hedge trimmer out, and we will blaze the path before us. And along the way, we will not just make a path, but we will find those who've been lost along the way. Do any of you ever remember a time perhaps you'd gone camping or, or you've just been out on, on a family picnic or you've been out in the park somewhere and you kind of get away and get off the beaten path and pretty soon you don't realize where you are. Maybe you've been mushroom hunting. There's one that, yeah, some people know that. And you kind of made your way through it because when you mushroom hunt, you're not looking up to where you're going. You're looking down to find the mushrooms, right? And pretty soon you're like three quarters of the way through the woods that you didn't know was anywhere near that big. All of a sudden, you realize that where's, where, where am I? I've been blazing a trail through these woods. I've been, you know, gently moving the wood out of the way to find the mushrooms underneath them, and to make sure there isn't anything else out there making its way along. 
When we're blazing trails, we need to be mindful that there are those who are lost along the way. And our task is not just keep Axel in the sanctuary, he's fine, <laughs> but to look for others along the way and help them back to the path. For they've been seeking something along the way. They got tired and, and they stopped for a moment and pretty soon the world grew up around them and they became lost in the thickets of the world. Blessed are the peacemakers. We're making the path. We're blazing that path. We're going forward with a focus to cross somewhere ahead of us. We're making our way. We find those who have been struggling along with us and we pull them and say, come with me. Follow me. We're on the path. It is the path of righteousness for his name's sake. We need to be the peacemakers. In a world that either doesn't understand or doesn't want peace, we need to bring peace back to where it was. Let me go back to 2 Corinthians. I'm going to name some things in here, and I want you to think for a moment, does this apply to the world today as it did 2,000 years ago? Afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. What's Paul talking about? I've never seen this. Long. Paul's letter to the church at Corinth. Could have been written to the church in New Carlisle. To any church in this day and age. These are the very same things that we are seeing. The world has not changed much in 2,000 years. But we have the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of those who are facing these hardships. Facing these calamities. Facing these hungers. Facing these beatings. Facing whatever they're facing. And we do it how? With purity. Knowledge, patience, okay, I could really use both of those, <laughs> kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech. You could certainly use a strong measure of that in this world today. And the power of God. When I read these scriptures a few weeks ago, I was putting this together. Lost at sea kind of stood out to me. There are those around us who are struggling in the storms of life. Some of you may be struggling in the storms of life. And you may feel overwhelmed. You may feel that your boat is sinking. You may feel that you're lost at sea. You need someone to come along beside you. The world needs people like us to walk along beside them, to help to raise them up, to pull them back to safety, to let them know that we care for them. We weren't looking for them. We weren't satisfied knowing that they were lost somewhere. We weren't satisfied waiting for someone else to do it. That we were the ones who decided it is up to us. We're going to be the ones to make a difference in their world. We're going to be the ones to search for them. And when we find them, we're not just going to bring them to safety, but we're going to walk alongside them as they recover, as they recoup, as they make their way forward. It's not enough to just pick them up and stand them on the feet, pat them off and say, well, have a nice day. No. That time has passed. It's now time for us to get involved in their lives and let them become involved in ours. That's what the love of Christ is. The love of Christ isn't just picking them up, putting them on their feet. The love of Christ is walking alongside them, making sure that they are truly okay. Because what happens when we stumble and fall? Someone's always there to, to kind of help us. You go, oh yeah, I'm okay. We always tell everybody we're okay. Really because you, your knee looks kind of skinned and and your elbow's kind of skinny. That's a really, you know, kind of a pretty good knot you got there on your head. Oh, no, really, I'm okay. Are you okay? 
As humans, we too often let pride get in the way. We're afraid to let others help us when we need help. We're, we're, we're too ashamed to acknowledge that we can't do everything that we used to do. And we're too afraid to ask for help. But yet, as Christians, we should understand what it means to give help, what it means to accept help. And that it's okay to ask along the way. I am amazed at our prayer chain and how wonderful that we are ready to share the needs of others and to help to pray with and for them and to have them taken care of. I can't remember the last time I saw a member of our prayer chain ask for a prayer for themselves. It's okay to ask for prayer for ourselves. It's okay when we're praying to God and we're we're seeking blessings for others. It's okay to say, you know what, by the way, God, if, if you get just a little bit of blessing left over, I could use some this week. I could use some today. I could use some encouragement. I could really use your grace. Oh, that whole knowledge and patience thing, I'd like that like right away if I could maybe. If it wouldn't hurt. Lots of it. Blessed are the peacemakers, the ones that make peace, the ones that have a focus on peace. It doesn't mean that we're the righteous interrupters, although we can be. Remember that from last week? Nobody wrote that down? <laughs> then I guess I'll just have to keep speaking to it one. There are times to be that righteous interrupter. To make peace, sometimes we have to stir things up. But it's also okay to be the one to step into the void and say, okay, What's going on and why? Let me better understand the situation and let's find a peaceable solution here. Know why people don't like peace? Because it means that sometimes they have to give something up that they want. Peace is often finding that point of unity. It requires opposite sides oftentimes give up something that they think is important to them to find a more amicable solution. We hear in the media today that our nation is one that doesn't want peace. We only want what we want and we don't care what anybody else wants. I want it, I want it now and I want it my way. But if the truth were to be told, there are a number of great people out there who are fighting against that. They're the ones that are trying to find a, a, a way forward in peace and unity, but also in truth saying, you know what, it isn't always what you want that matters. Oh, and by the way, did you elect yourself or were you elected to serve others? I think that our, our, our nation is struggling to move forward. We have this thicket in front of us, and we can't see a path. So a new path needs to be blazed by the leaders who are willing to go forward. You're not a leader unless there are those who go with you. You need the strength of those around you. Blessed are the peacemakers, those who make peace. It is their focus in life. It's what they live for. They become good at it because they learn to walk alongside others, hearing the true needs, separating the needs from the wants. It's difficult to do in a personal level. How do you do it for groups or for communities, especially those that are struggling? For peace to have a chance. There needs to be peace within ourselves for us to be able to increase peace in our community and peace in our world. When we encounter those who are lost, oftentimes they have lost their peace. They're struggling, they don't understand why. They're looking for something, but they don't know what. They need some help, but they don't know how to ask for it. They may not know how to receive it. 
But you and I have been through those lessons. You and I have been taught the ways of Jesus, and we have him as a model, and we have the scriptures to be able to show us ways to go forward. It begins by walking alongside the lost. Does that mean we got to get lost ourselves? Pastor Cal's not telling you to get lost. But if you need to venture off the path to find those who need help, it's okay. Because one thing I know about God, when we veer off of God's path, when we choose our own ways, and when we find ourselves lost, all we need to do is reach out, cry out, and God's hand is there waiting for us. We are never lost in the eyes of God. That's an amazing truth. We're never lost the eyes of God. We may lose ourselves. We may lose our way. God does not lose us. Our challenge is to walk alongside those who need us. To find those who need us. We need to have our eyes open to the world. We need to see through eyes of faith. Block out the murmurs. <clears throat> Block out the darkness of the world. Live our faith. Be the peacemakers that this world needs. Be the ones who look for the lost. Amen? Amen. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymnals or to the screen. And number 514 is our closing hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. <laughs>
reminder is before we depart, Wednesday night, concert in the park. We'll have popcorn and water there. Come out and enjoy it. Saturday night is movie night. Please come out and be a part of that. Let your friends and neighbors know. We'll be gathered out here on the east side of the church for that. Looking forward to a good time of that. Fellowship time immediately following the service. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and grant you his peace. God be with you till we meet.